Hi, I'm Logan Clare, and I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about what it's like to build a startup here in Portland, if you ever thought about that, and what it's like to get money for your startup. So if you're ever thinking about what angel investors are, what venture capitalists are in Portland, let's talk about that. So this is the vision that I had, and if you're thinking of starting a company, this is probably your vision as well, which is there's a yellow brick road that leads to a wizard at the end, and these wizards or angel investors or venture capitalists are just going to give you all the money and you'll head off to the promised land. But the truth is that there are other ways besides getting money from angel investors and venture capitalists. These are faces of people who bootstrap companies into billion-dollar businesses, and I'll give you five bucks afterwards if you know who all three of these people are. They built billion-dollar businesses with no outside money. So we can all stop here. No, actually, the truth is I do like telling you up front what the bottom line is. These are the four points. But most importantly is money in Portland is scarce. There's not a lot of money here in this town if you want to get investment for your startup. I didn't believe it, but these are the numbers. And when you divide over that 20-month period that I'm showing you, several million dollars, that's not a lot of money per startup. Think about that. If you divide seven, eight million dollars, 25 ways, there's not much there. So your perception, as was mine when I started my startup, is that there are an infinite number of places in Portland to get money. That's simply not true. In other words, you look around, you think anybody can fund your startup. The reality is there are six to seven places in Portland that you can go that are angel investor groups or venture capital groups that you can raise money from. And everybody goes through those same six to seven doors. Everybody has the same story. So this is bad news, right? It feels like a downer. Your odds of getting money, and I counted up all the deals, I counted up how many pitches are heard. Your odds of getting money, if you're looking for Portland investors to be first money into your company, 3%. And I know everyone says they have a great team. We got a great team. Right, well, so did they. <laughs> but it doesn't add up. Because... And this is one that I just, I can't even believe exists on the internet. Even if you team up with Boy George, it's not going to be enough. And I really don't even know what this has to do with the presentation, but when I look for pictures of the A-team, this came back. Mr. T and Boy George. And why is Boy George smirking? What does he know? <laughs> but let's bring it back. Okay, so look at these numbers here. This is a typical angel conference where there's one winner. Like, you know, everyone goes in, only one man exits. Well, one team exits, that's a 1.6% chance of winning, and most of these conferences look the same. So that means a lot of A teams that are making the finals aren't getting money. This is pretty simple. There are more teams than there are money here. So if you have 60 teams competing for money, like at the Seattle Angel Conference, one winner, probably won't get anything. Third point, it's not really fun doing fundraising. It doesn't add to your business acumen. It doesn't add to your understanding of customers. It doesn't help you get more customers. And that's what we believe. Oh, I'm getting something out of this. But the problem is, it increases your pointless knowledge. And I know people will say to me, and I've said to myself, right, but I'm learning about convertible notes and preferred shares. This is awesome. No, it's not awesome. <laughs> it's backroom knowledge you have to know, but you can't do anything with it in terms of building a great business. So the last point is, your business is not likely to be a unicorn. I mean, it doesn't look like Facebook. It's not going to be a billion dollar business. And investors here know that. They can smell it out when you're not a Facebook. So what are you going to do about that? Well, I think you need to understand that there are other kinds of horses besides unicorns. One of them is you can sell early. In other words, you build a business and you sell it for a few million dollars. I think someone like Stumptown did that. Or you can have a lifestyle company, which is often denigrated. Right? So lifestyle companies are like workhorses. You make a good living. There's nothing wrong with that. But for many people, they look at it in the investment community saying, ah, oh, you only want to be a lifestyle company. You only want to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Who wants to do that? Well, I think there are a lot of people who want to do that. <laughs> but the important part is don't lie to yourself. Right? So if you try and trick yourself into believing you're a unicorn, investors will sniff that out. You're not going to raise any money. Be who you are. Because when you're not who you are, when you try and trick investors and you get their money, the thing is you lose control of your company. And if you want to be a lifestyle company or an early exit company, you want to stay in control, then do that. 
And I think what Oprah says here is really valuable. And this is what I want you to take away. You're in control of your own destiny, just as I'm in control of my own destiny. I don't blame angel investors for not funding me. I don't blame venture capitalists for not funding me. It's my job to make my success happen. Hope you feel the same way. Thanks.